What's up, guys? This is a product of Rotten Apple Films, and I am, of course, not Jared, but uh, his friend Austin. And today, uh, Jared and I are going to discuss why people argue over Call of Duty and Battlefield, and how they both are very good games and very good franchises. So, uh, Jared, you're more of a Battlefield guy, I'm more of Call of Duty. We both play the other games. Uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on Battlefield 4 and COD Ghosts and how they've essentially benefited from each other's innovations? Well, I mean, Battlefield 4 is like Revolution. It's kind of made COD, you know, like the free-for-all map deck, like the first DLC. It's kind of made them think a little bit, outside, a little bit more outside the box. <laughs> A little bit more outside the box than they usually do, and I think that's great because you know with b better competition, you know there's better games, and they strive to be better than the other, so more innovation. Uh, you know, Call of Duty's been the king of the uh, two games ever since, and uh, Battlefield since Battlefield Three has been just on the rise. Their sales, their the community has just spiked and is continuing to grow as Call of Duty is kind of maxing out. And, and yes, you have Call of Duty's got more, you got the Major League Championships in gaming. Uh, well, Battlefield I, usually doesn't see that, but I'm kind of looking forward to a Battlefield Championship. Well, I, I kind of want to say something about like the Battlefield 4 Championship, or like Battlefield Championships in general. Uh, the reason Call of Duty really strives at the championship, uh, or like at championship events, is because they are able to be main, um, I forgot what they call it, main stage when they actually play the events, and that's because they have spectator mode, and people can watch it like on streams, and if they're there, they can actually look up on the big screen and see everybody playing, um, and it'd be like shoutcast and everything. Whereas like Battlefield 3, there was supposed to be a major event in Germany in 2000, late 2012. But it, no, Dice never said anything about it after that, um, and it was mainly because of. Uh, Would have been a games con well, for Call of Duty Black Ops. Yeah, it was pretty much like because they didn't have spectator mode. You know, you couldn't see everybody playing, and that's what really makes it great on Call of Duty. And I will say, I do like watching Call of Duty championships; they're actually pretty entertaining. And you know, that's the big reason why, you know, Battlefield Four never really had, um, or Battlefield Three, never uh, had any like big major championships like you see Call of Duty like UMG and MLG Dallas and UMG Los Angeles and all that crap and not crap it's pretty cool you think with the uh, new the Frostbite 3 engine on Battlefield 4 do you think we'll see some kind of spectator mode and possibly the development of well they've already they've already kind of released a uh, spectator mode um, I don't know I know it gives you different camera angles I'm guessing it's kind of similar to um, like Black Ops 2 or any other real COD um, I'm guessing that's how it is. Like, they haven't really showed screenshots of it yet, or I don't think they have, so. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you think of uh, Call of Duty bringing the dynamic maps into Ghosts? Are they piggybacking off of the success of Battlefield with that? Or do you think it's a mutual give and take as Battlefield 4 is starting to get more fluid as, like, Call of Duty? Well... Call of Duty seeing how Battlefield 4 is, or Battlefield 3 um, has taken off and how Battlefield 4, the Revolution, I mean, it got people talking. Um, seeing the building come down, it got people excited and all this wanting to make the building come down. So, I mean, it, you know, they, they kind of took it from them, but in a sense, they made it their own, which I think is what um, a lot of first person shooters do off of each other. Um, like Battlefield, uh, maybe going to. Uh, like a theater mode type thing. They're just making their game better off of another game. And, I mean, they're both still great games. So, um, yeah. That's, I guess that's an answer. Do you believe it's good for... We know Mark Rubin commented one time that he'd like to see Battlefield succeed and become what its potential is. Do you think DICE feels the same way? I hope. <laughs> I mean, I hope because, you know, when one major first-person shooter um, has success, 
that causes you to think more outside the box and innovate more into your game and make your game better. And may, I mean, it, it, all, it helps everybody. Um, and knowing that these two, uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield, um, are two of the biggest first person shooters out there today. Um, knowing that they're pretty much the future of first person shooters, you know, that it's really exciting to hear that people, or like, not people, like the developers want the other, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, like the developers yeah. want the other company to do good, just as I would hope the other developers want the other company to do good. So, kind of like mutual. Respect. I think we'll ever see an establishment of park system in Battlefield or vehicles in Call of Duty. We've seen a lot. We've seen a more. We've seen kill streaks in Call of Duty evolve into more vehicle type kill streaks. Like the uh, one good one's the Reaper from Modern Warfare 3, the, uh, the VTOL warship from Black Ops 2. You think we'll see more of those and maybe possibly on the maps? Uh, I think I think they kind of have to. I think they kind of have to have vehicles at some point in a game, mainly because, you know, you see Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4, and pretty much all the Battlefields have some kind of a vehicle. And I think vehicles actually help the game out. I think playing Conquest and Rush is, you know, real fun and... <laughs> that was an epic moment, sorry. But uh, I think... Uh, you know, vehicles and you know, vehicles make the game fun. And like you get bored, you go fly a helicopter into somebody's face. I mean, that's always fun. Um, but I think sooner or later they'll ha they'll have to put um, vehicles in there. Just like sooner or later, I think Battlefield would have to put some type of score streak on there, or, or something. Just uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just they'd have to put something on there that would compare to. Uh, like something on the other game, like a score streak or a, hopefully not death streaks, but you know something like that. When, how do you think the if Call of Duty did develop vehicles, how do you think the maps would change? You see, Battlefield with these ginormous maps on Conquest and Rush, and then you see these just small confined spaces on Call of Duty. Where do you think the view? How do you think the vehicles would fit? Well, if you put a T-90 tank for Battlefield 3 on a Nuketown map, Jesus Christ. I mean, there's like no way. Yeah. Uh, you would be blowing both the houses to smithereens. It would, it would be ridiculous, uh, to say the least. I mean, they'd have to have some bigger maps. Like, you know, there's... Like a, ma a map like Overflow on Black Ops 2, like that wouldn't be bigger. What's the biggest map on Black Ops 2? What's the biggest map on Black Ops 2? Ooh, that's a tough one. I know. Let's take the biggest map in all of Call of Duty, and that was from that's Wasteland from Modern Warfare Two. All right, so I've never really seen Wasteland, but I'm guessing if you put a tank on there, it would be kind of sort of like No Shark Canals, maybe maybe a little bit bigger. All right, you put a tank on No Shark Canals Team Deathmatch, and it's it rips shit up. Same as if you put like a tank on. Any Call of Duty map right now, it would rip shit up. I think they would have to, they would have to expand their maps. They'd have to make their maps a whole lot bigger. I mean, I don't, I don't see how that would work to put a tank like that on there, or a, a helicopter, or anything like that. You know. What the well, in Wasteland, you actually see a one of the obstacles is a uh, tank that's been taken out. It's it's on fire and. It seems like it fits pretty good, but you'd have to make that map would have to be the smallest. That that would have to be the smallest well, compared to all the other maps that Call that's of Duty. That's kind of like develop. on um, what is that one map? Oh jeez, Black Ops Two. Oh, it's got the tank in the middle. Jesus, slums. No, um, I can't remember the map, but if you if you put a tank on there that's actually moving. I mean, and shooting. If you and on Battlefield Three, there's some people that all they do is use Damn. tanks, and they are so experienced it's not even funny. So you put somebody with that experience on a, in a tank on a map like that, and it's it's game over. So I mean, I think you have to have bigger maps just so the gameplay is smooth. And yeah. Okay, to wrap it up, how do you think these? 
how do you think Call of Duty Ghosts and Battlefield 4 will, uh, how do you, how much success do you believe it will have on the cross, cross, uh, generation platform? Well, I think Battlefield 4 has most to improve on with, like, the next-gen consoles, if that's what you're talking about. Mainly because, like, 90% of the players on Battlefield or something ridiculous like that play on PC. And I, for one, play on the PS3. And, um, you know, a lot of people play on the PC. It makes everything better if the PC, or if the next-gen consoles, excuse me, are more like PC. And I think they're going to be like that. And, it, I mean, that, that's going to make Battlefield 4 a whole lot better. I mean, Black, or Black Ops. Cod Ghosts, I don't see how they would benefit as much as Battlefield 4 because, you know, with the high demand of graphics, all the, all like the, what do you call it, all the shit, all the stuff you, we do to our engine, like putting the building falling down and making like dynamic the, maps. Yeah, the dynamic maps and stuff, which I know, like, Call of Duty Ghosts is going to have it too, but um, I just think with all the uh, stress we put on the engine that, um, a console better like the PS3 and Xbox 360, you know, that can ha handle 60 frames per second, beautiful graphics and shit. Yeah, that's that's what I think. What do you think? Uh, well, I think these games are gonna be. I don't think they'll sell because of the uh, cross gen. The fact that how much does the PS4 go? Three hundred, three ninety, four hundred dollars. And the Xbox One's five hundred dollars. That's really expensive, and you know a lot of gamers are not that rich. So Amen. I think they'll resort to PC gaming, uh, PS3, and Xbox 360. I don't think that Microsoft and Sony will have as great a turnout as they will, as they believe they will, on the uh, on Ghosts and Battlefield. Yeah. So that wraps it up uh, for us. Uh, leave your comments in this in the uh, in this section comment below. Comment section down below. Yeah. Sorry, not good at this. Uh, but yeah, and subscribe to my friend here. He's uh, really enjoying this uh, YouTube experience. You mean the? Yeah. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Leave a comment. Thank. Tell him. Ah, fuck me. <laughs> Telling us what you think about the video. And yeah, so subscribe if you haven't already. And. Excuse his rage. Peace! Oh. Bitchin. I don't listen to that. That's about to expire step up mom online Nice work. RTB for debrief.